Good morning to you. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis, and we've got your HCC news and information for the next half hour. Got a big show lined up for you today. We're going to talk gaming. We'll also hear from someone here at HCC TV. Very special guest. Who could it be? Hmm. Well, Dr. Tony Rayo is uh, here with us as well. Tony, you got any ideas who this special guest is? I don't know. Uh, I think his initials were CB, but I don't know. That sounds like a radio thing. I, I, I'm yeah. not sure who it is, but I, I I do hear that he even has a guest. And so wow. we'll see who that is. So it's yeah. a myriad of surprises joining <laughs> us on the show. Absolutely. So a co- virtual cornucopia of yeah. surprises. <laughs> so stick around for that. All right. Uh, Tony, you want to remind everyone that, hey, folks, We're on HCC TV these days with this show. It's not live, but it's rebroadcasted at noon and 5 p.m., Mondays through Friday. So if you don't catch us live on Facebook Live or YouTube like you are right now, you can watch the rebroadcast on Facebook, or I should say on HCC TV. But you can always watch us on social media, Tony. Absolutely. Uh, Look for Houston Community College District. That's how you find us on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. And when you do that, just follow us and and it'll be fun. <laughs> it'll be loads of fun as you're about to have Especially now. today. <laughs> Especially today with our guests. All right. Uh, Alicia Holman Franco is the manager of Atomic Gaming Cafe. Good morning, Alicia. How are you? Morning. I'm doing really well. How are you doing? We're great. It's good to see you, and I'm glad to have you with us as our gaming guest for this Wednesday. We're looking forward to hearing all about the Atomic Gaming Cafe. cafe. So being that it's a cafe, grab yourself some coffee, and we'll be back with you shortly. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Alicia. Okay. First guest we've got here, you may know him because every now and then on Facebook Live, here's a tip. You may see these weird notifications pop up that HCC is live, Houston Community College District is live, and then you tune in, you got some guy there going, "Uh, we're just checking out our system right here and blah, 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 blah. Who's the person who does it? Well, Chris Bourne is his name. He is our chief broadcast engineer, and he's joining us from the HCC TV studios, downtown Houston. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Todd. Great to be with you. Good to have be with you. Good to see you as well in person. Don't get to see you that much in person these days, but I'm glad to see you're staying safe and masked up there. Um, You've got a special guest that you're going to be introducing us to uh, on the show. Maybe you can uh, tell us a bit about the guest. Yeah, I'll I'll give you a little bit of uh, context, and as you may um, you know, but not our viewers know, I'm in the HCC green room. And yeah, oh, yeah, it's and green. It's the first, I, you know, I worked at several TV stations. That is the first green room that's actually painted green. It's usually just a phrase to talk about a way. A green room is a basically a waiting room for people who are going to be guests on TV shows. They go sit in there, they have some water, they watch some TV, and they just relax. We've got one at HCC TV, and they took it a little bit too far. It actually is a green room. Yeah, we um, we're we're sometimes wondering if this puts our guests into a trance state. The color green, you know, like they say, pink rooms mellow people out. Yeah. So we're we're doing a lot of research on that, and we'll we'll get back with you. Um, um, Todd is my boss, so I'm I'm on with my boss this morning. Nothing a little more stressful than that. But um, and um, so. Uh, before we get into the studio baby, um, who is my guest this yeah. morning, um, I'd want to put a little context into all of this. And, um, you know, I, I work here as the chief broadcast engineer, but I'm also an adjunct instructor. Yes, and you are. A lot of the stuff that I do for work are things that we teach here at yeah. HCC. Right. Right. And it's it's that magical time um, twice a year, we three times a year, um, fall, spring and summer. We have uh, uh, registration and enrollment and you, too, can start your uh, um, journey uh, in technology or media or any number of uh, um, disciplines that we offer at HCC. And a lot of them are really fun. Some of them are the you know requisites that you might need to transfer to another college like math and um, you know, other other uh, sociology and stuff like that. But we have it all here at HCC. Yeah. So a little plug for the plug for the organization. I what think what uh, courses are you teaching in the fall, Chris? Um, well, 
you know, I teach advanced video, uh, it's advanced film and video editing. Right. But we have several people on our staff here at HCC that are also adjunct instructors and teach yeah. all sorts of things. Our director this morning is the adjunct that teaches uh, media classes, digital media classes. Our co-host, Tony, also teaches in our uh, drama department. That's right. And uh, we have, we have uh, a lot of uh, folks that work here at the station that are online um, doing things. And, uh, you know, we all have many, many years of experience, yourself included here in broadcasting, and we host interns at the station and work study students. And so we we share our experience with all of them and um, we love doing it. So I wanted to get that in and put that out there this morning, um, but I digress. You know, um, people think our work is is all fun and it's not. It's a lot of, you do have to have some aptitude um, and some knowledge and experience to do this job. We make it seem simple. And a lot of people nowadays with their devices like smartphones and um, um, webcams and things like that um, do create their own media content and social media content. Um, but we like to think we take it a step further and we're good storytellers and we put a little bit uh, more professional touch to our productions. And it's not as easy as it, as it may appear to be. Um, and people find out when they start doing social media on a regular basis that there's deadlines and yeah. um, you have to have reliable equipment. It has to be connected properly. Usually somebody who's doing social media has a go-to person that can answer all their technical questions. I guess um, I'm one of those go-to people here. But we also have other people that help us with what we do here at the, uh, the station. We call it the station. We have a cable channel. We have two cable channels here at HCC. One that uh, um, is called HCC TV and another one that's out in the Stafford area called right. SME TV. So we're quite busy with producing content and running these channels 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so one of the things that we do is um, run uh, production studios. And um, our guest, my guest this morning, um, was introduced to our writer several weeks ago when we were getting all the equipment back in service and checking things out after 17 months of sitting idle. And, and uh, Melanie, our, our writer for the show, said, oh, we need to have that studio baby as a guest on the show. And I said, well, you know, th that could be dangerous because uh, studio baby can get yeah. a little out, of, out of control. But um, so my guest this morning is our uh, studio baby, that we use um, for setting up the studio, setting up cameras, fascinating, um, checking lighting and right. things like that. Studio Baby, do you have anything to say to our audience? Um, no, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, um, you're not really paying me, so I'm not going to do a lot of work this morning. Well, anyway, um, that's what we have in the studio. We don't know where Studio Babies come from. Um, they just appear, and um, they're very helpful in setting things up. Well, actually, I have a I have a history of performers in my family. Um, I I don't know. Um, do we have any pictures? I have some relatives that are that are in the business here. We've Chris, got... I just want to point out something. It's yes. uh, it's now almost nine minutes after ten, and this is the time we lost the show. This is the time the show went off the rails. Nine minutes after okay. 10 on the 11th of August, 2021, went up to the minute, just went off, <laughs> off the rails. That's what happened because Chris started talking with Studio Baby. So I, uh, what I understand, Studio <laughs> Baby has a history. Does Studio Baby have relatives? Yeah. Uh, any relatives from out of this country? Studio Baby has some, some relatives from out of the country. She um, has some relatives in Russia. I'm not too clear on the relatives from Russia. Yeah. She has um, uh, relatives from Louisiana as well. Right. Not, I wasn't right. insinuating that that's out of the country, although I have heard some jokes yeah. about that. Yeah. But uh, I'm not part of that. I don't want to be part of that. So but, um, just to be clear, yeah. Studio Baby's not on our uh, payroll. Studio no. Baby is a volunteer intern, correct? I can get on the payroll? Yeah, I didn't okay. know that. Chris yeah. never told yeah. me that. Well, no, right. Studio Baby, we, we didn't talk about that, but how old are you? Can you t share? With I'm 36 years old. 36. Really? All right. Well, you, yeah. you've definitely preserved a youthful appearance um, all these years, and um, and we're really happy to have you. You're very helpful 
to us. Just to just to bring things back to earth. Yeah. Um, studio babies used for camera framing for yeah. uh, for when you need to zoom in and yeah. uh, get a clear shot. Make sure your 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 shot is not blurry and you focus. We use Studio Baby for that. And Studio, Studio Baby is used when our guests, before they arrive, helps Chris Correct. set up the lighting. So yeah. if you're wondering, there's a purpose behind this. We just didn't go out and grab a doll and no. put the doll on the chair for a segment on the show. Studio Baby has some purposes in our studio. And it is interesting. By the way, you know, during this um, pandemic, I've been practicing my ventriloquism. Yeah. And so yeah. Uh, it's yeah. really been kind of a side gig for me. Right. And, you know, Todd, I, I, in all seriousness, you know, we try not to take ourselves too seriously. You know, there's oh, a I lot know. of stress. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. There's a as, lot of stress. In, lot of, in the last <laughs> seven or eight minutes. There's know. a lot of stress in this work. Yeah. There's a lot of deadlines. There's a lot of things that sometimes don't work. And um, the studio baby is very helpful. I mean, when you can't so find somebody to sit in front of it a is. camera. In, in yeah. Studio babies made a number of appearances. And I want to talk about the equipment real briefly. The equipment Chris has behind him. Thank you, Studio Baby, for appearing. We'll see you next time. I'm You're welcome. Studio. You're Thank welcome. You. Right. Okay. So the equipment behind Chris is actually equipment we take out with us when we are asked to do live stream events, convocation, state of the college, things along those lines. Um, you'll see a lot of this equipment. We also have it in our podcast studio. It includes more or less a, uh, a TV studio in a box that you can take on the road and remote controlled cameras. And in this day and age of COVID, this is our main studio setup for the time being. Uh, because we're doing a lot of stuff on the road and we're managing a lot of live streams. So we do have some some seriousness with Chris here and why he's talking about this. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a great setup. Chris, thank you for bringing Studio Baby on the show. You're welcome. And uh, thanks for all thanks you Thanks for do. having me. Yeah, thank you. All right. <laughs> and we uh, uh, we Very appreciate great. all you do. I know you're you're busy as yeah. heck and uh, you're you're literally across the district setting stuff up. So thanks for being here this morning and best of wishes to you, Studio Baby and her extended family. Sorry for taking the show down into the comedy gutter. It just went off the rails about seven minutes ago. So we're, we're okay. We're back. Thanks for having me. I Thanks. like that Studio Baby is wearing a mask. That means yeah. that she is taking, she's taking everything serious. She's following rules. I like it. She's, that's very yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Good Studio example. Baby is, Thank yeah. You. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Chris. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, Tony. Maybe you can guide us back into the promised land <laughs> as we head on with this show for the next... With reality? <laughs> oh, yeah, reality there. Uh, and why don't we uh, talk about our gaming guest, Alicia? Okay. Well, Alicia Holman Franco is the manager of Atomic Gaming Cafe. How are you, Alicia? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing good. Now... You are the manager, you're not the owner, but you're the manager, but you can tell us a little bit about how the store opened and why is it called Atomic? <laughs> so the um, location that I'm currently at, we used to be just a bakery. The owners are a married couple and um, the wife, she owned the bakery for three years until the pandemic began. The husband, he owns um, Atomic Hobby Shop up in Cyprus. And when people started canceling their quinceañeras, their weddings, uh, we needed some kind of physical product. And he thought that we could merge our businesses. And as restrictions got less and less, it ended up making a really interesting environment where people are able to get food, they're able to play games. Um, and it's been really interesting because I don't know any other um, game stores that have food as much as we do. So that's what you would say is different about your game, your gaming shop is that it has food or, you know, what, what's different? That is something that's really different, but I think it's how much we focus on community. Um, we want to have a welcoming atmosphere, make sure things are non-toxic and that we welcome everyone in. Um, a lot of other shops, they've been having issues where there's been, um, decreases in allocation of commander product of Pokemon and they've been increasing prices and we've been wanting to keep those prices low and focus on our community um, instead of trying to make a quick buck during the pandemic. So, is it, so are you saying there's a shortage of product also? 
early on, there really was. There was um, a lot of trouble with the companies being able to print the product, being able to allocate it to businesses. And during the pandemic, our other shop has been seeing less and less product than they used to. It's gotten a lot better now, but it was really rough at the beginning of the pandemic. So uh, during the pandemic, did you have a lot of people come to the shop or how did you how did you, how did you survive? Not at first. A lot of it is that we had food that was able to be delivered. Um, we would have it to where we had online tournaments where we would have people um, play with each other remotely. And as we started moving further along and people started being able to meet again, we started having people come in but required masks. We had people spaced out as much as we could and still play the game. Um, we even had barriers set in place to where people were not directly face to face with one another. That's great. Well, now um, there are all kinds of games that people play there. Tell me some of those games. So we're mostly a commander shop, which is a specific format for magic gathering. We have people come all throughout the week for that, but we also have groups for Vanguard, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, and a bit of Digimon. Um, we also have a couple of groups that come in regularly for different role-playing games and board games where we'll try to help them find other groups to play with. So we have some forms that new players are able to fill out so we can connect them with other new players. So if you're a beginner at this and you don't really know what to do, but you want to learn how to do this, uh, how would, what is somebody, what can they do when, if they come to your shop? So we have a couple of introductory products that help you learn how to play, but our Staff are more than happy to help teach you play. We even have sat, um, Sundays dedicated as a learn to play day where our staff will come in. And if you have some kind of starting deck or if you pick one up from us, we can start teaching you the basics of the game and how to play. We have our own deck. So a lot of the time we're able to play with ours and yours. We have starter level decks. Um, some of our staff have an altered pre-con so that we're playing on the same level as you if you buy a deck here. Oh, okay. And um, what uh, the you have special days for special events. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, our week, it may fluctuate starting next month, but currently we have Mondays as our man, Vanguard Day. People come in for little tournaments where you bring your own deck and um, we end up giving gift cards as prizes. On Tuesdays, we have Yu-Gi-Oh! It's been pretty mid-tier, nothing super competitive. Wednesdays is dedicated to board games and role-playing games where people are able to rent the games that we have available at the shop. Um, and Friday is going to be our draft day where we're drafting Magic the Gathering. It's usually the most recent set or whatever people are really wanting to do. We'll sometimes take a poll and see what people want to play that day. Hmm. And Saturday, what do you do then? Saturday, we have the morning dedicated to Pokemon that's mostly set there for whenever pre-releases happen. Um, and then our evenings is going to be a modern time slot. We're trying to... What does to that mean? <laughs> what does modern mean in this regard? Um, that's a specific format for Magic the Gathering. Instead of Commander, where it's a singleton format where you play only one of each card, this one allows you to play up to four and your basic lands. Um, instead of standard, which we have a sale for with our packs, it includes any set in magic um, instead of limiting it to the most recent ones. Okay. You know what uh, What uh, gets me about wanting to go there is your food. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, so people can go there, have fun with uh, friends and, and make new friends. Uh, they don't have to pay for a table, right? If they want to just play a board game, they could just sit there and, and, and play, right? Yeah, our space is entirely free. So is renting the games. Um, the only thing you actually get charged for is any products that you're wanting to buy or the food. Um, and our discounts, like they apply globally to anything. Um, for our menu, we have a wide variety of foods. We have chicken tenders that we have sauces and seasonings, just like that they were um, buffalo wings. We have paninis, bubble teas, ice cream, cupcakes, cookies. Um, some of our most popular dishes is going to be our 
pizza panini where you get pepperoni, mozzarella, and our most popular drink is something that we came up with is our atomic tea. It's actually a energy drink styled tea so that when people are here playing on a long night on Friday until midnight when we close or even later, they have energy to go through that whole night. Yeah, that's their that's their energy to, to keep them going. So how late do you stay open? What are your hours? On um, Friday and Saturday currently, we're staying open from noon until midnight. Um, Sunday, we close at 6 p.m. And the rest of the week, we close at 9 p.m. Okay. Um, even though those are our set times, we sometimes will stay open even later if games are still going on. Um, and we've stayed on a Friday up until 5 a.m. before. Oh, wow. That's neat. And and you said you had a monthly raffle. What What is that? Yeah. So for our monthly raffle, every time someone spends $20, they get a point. Every point um, goes up to 10. At 10, you can use them to get $5 off. Every time you get a point, you also will get a raffle ticket. So people get lots of raffle tickets. If you buy a box, you get five or six right there. And at the end of the month, we'll do the drawing where we will randomly choose one winner who will get our Pokemon prize, Yu-Gi-Oh prize, or Magic the Gathering prize, where we have multiple products that they get all of them. It's not like they get one item. They get multiple items that come up to about like $120, $150 each month. So those are big prizes. Those are <laughs> cool things. And where are you located? We're located in Missouri City off Highway 6. Um, we're in the same parking lot as Star Cinema Grill, if y'all know where that is. Mm -hmm. I do because I'm from Missouri City. In fact, that's five minutes away from me. <laughs> Fun. I'm, Tony, you're you're going to have to head out there and pick me up one of the atomic teas when you get a chance, Tony. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I I know those bubble teas are great. So yeah, I want the, the tea energy drink. When you get one for me, get one for Chris. He could probably <laughs> use one. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, he needs that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Alicia, thanks for joining us. Uh, Alicia Holman Franco, the manager of the Atomic Gaming Cafe. Uh, we look forward to seeing you out there in person. Thanks for being here. Right. Look forward to seeing y'all too. Thanks for having me. All right. Atomic teas. I'm I'm interested in that. That's that's <laughs> my interest there. I'm looking forward to that. Okay, your HCC news and announcements. Mattress Mac, you know him, you love him. Gallery Furniture. Well, he's uh he's got a, a program here at HCC. HCC's Northwest Center for Entrepreneurship is presenting the Mattress Mac School of Selling with six. Get it six free virtual sessions on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Next one up, 10 to noon, Thursday, August the 12th. The title of it is Persistence. Uh, we will have a link on how you can attend that in the post, the social media post after the show. Also, August Community Learning, that's happening as well, Tony. Yes, we have a new round of community learning. Uh, one is called Opportunity Workshops. Excel level 200 beyond spreadsheets. So a lot of people are, I, I do a lot of Excel work just because of some of the administrative stuff, but people are always asking me, how do I do this? How do I do that? And so this is a good place to learn how to really use Excel because it yeah. can do a whole lot of things if, if you know how to how to use it. Uh, that's noon to 1.30, Friday, August 13th. And then there's, it's called Scams and Disasters for Ages 50 Plus. Uh, to prepare for all of this uh, in case, you know, because everybody, but I don't care what age you are, they're all trying to. Anybody scheme. can fall for it. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, so. we, there's a link, a very long link, but we'll place it in the social media post for the show. But you can sign up for these classes. They are all free. Hey, speaking of free, 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 free haircuts are back just in time for classes. Free haircuts are offered to staff and students only on Wednesdays at HCC Central. Hey, that's today. Uh, it's at the J.B. Whiteley building. Make sure you take your ID card. Uh, it happens all day, but noon to 1 p.m. is when they go to lunch. So keep that in mind. Uh, we'll have more information in the social media posts for the show. And also cooking classes. Yeah, they're happening, Tony. A tip of the toque. You know what a toque is? Huh? I didn't know what a toque was until just recently. It's the chef's hat. You know, I just call well, it the chef's hat. <laughs> as I learned from Bob and Doug McKenzie from the Great White North, uh, an old sketch uh, from the 80s, a toque is also one of those knit hats they used to wear in Canada. 
Ooh, those, okay. you know, like uh, the, the skull cap things, you know. So, Bob and Doug McKenzie, kids, if you don't know who they are, look them up on YouTube. Hilarious. Well, anyways, uh, the tip of the choke, uh, let's see, HCC Central Culinary Arts Department is partnering with India House, and they are giving free culinary classes. The next one is on apple crumb pie. Oh, yeah, with Chef Katie Rogel. It's Wednesday, August 18th from 4 to 5 p.m. Okay, we've got uh, a lot of ways of funding your college tuition, especially if you sign up to be a student in the fall. The Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund is rolling out its third round of funding in response to COVID, the COVID-19 pandemic. And HCC has received $59 million to help our students with tuition. Fall enrolled students, that's the key, enroll for college for the fall can get help to pay off your cost of tuition, fees, books, supplies, housing, food, transportation, child care, health care, and more. Go to the request form on the My Eagle online. Enroll for the fall will help you pay for college and uh, thanks to the government. Also, FAFSA verification, that's happening. Uh, there's a change. U.S. Department of Education has announced that they're making temporary changes to the federal student aid verification process. For more information on that, go to our financial aid. We'll have a link to them in your social media post. And Tony, fall enrollment is underway, but the main thing is, as we mentioned, you got to enroll to get funding now. assistance. Now, yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, so I mean, you know, if you if you need uh, money or whatever, you need to fill out the FAFSA form. But no matter what, you need to register now. We have online anytime, online on a schedule, hybrid courses, in person courses, all kinds of things, and your your face to face are closing real uh, quickly Quickly. because they're smaller. So you need to register now. It's, It's less than two weeks. It's not even two weeks before classes start. Yeah, hccs.edu slash now, where you go to register. Okay, we're wrapping up the show. Tomorrow on the show, Sue Maraska, one of our friends, joins us. HCC, she's in charge of the HCC Vast Academy. She's been there since the beginning. We'll hear about all the great service work they do. Incredible program. And it's Thursday, Virtual Family Fun Day with a visit to the Lone Star Flight Museum, which is now housed at Ellington Air Force Base. All right, Tony, you're back tomorrow, right? Yes, I am. (laughs) All right. She's back tomorrow. I'm back tomorrow. We'll see you all live tomorrow, 10 a.m. on Up to the Minute. 